Hello and welcome to another video and in this video we will be painting, or I will be painting, sorry, we'll be doing the Alfarion, uh, the light of Alfarion from the new sort of released Lumineth Realm Lords. If you are watching this in the future, everything is out and it's awesome and I hope you enjoy the battle tomb as much as I am. So what we're going to be doing is in this video we're going to be painting um, this up to look a little bit like the box art um if you've checked out my facebook page you'll have seen my version for my army and i've gone a little bit teal and a little bit more sort of white armor this i'm going to be sort of doing a bone armor so it's going to use a, a fair bit of contrast paint um just to get it done and to keep it nice and simple so what we're going to do is we're going to just look down at how i've broken the model down so the model is quite complicated in regards to how it's built so as you can see there's certain parts missing um, the weapons are being taken off and i'll paint them separately and i've kept the head off and it's here on a separate thing that i'm going to paint up uh, the reason why is so i can actually get into these parts here and actually get as much done as i can all right so let's get cracking and we'll get started. So the paints that you're going to need at first is you're going to need some Mechanica Standard Grey. And this is going to be for all of the black areas as well as the, the base. So just dump a little bit on your wet palette. So the areas that you really want to paint are as follows. You want to get these done, these large plinths, grey plinths. Now just be careful around the bottom of his feet. Okay, so this is where you want to get these painted. If you have seen the the other version that I've done and you like the teal, there is a teal. How to do the teal sort of green stone base um, is up on the channel already. Let me check that out. So what we do is we get these covered and we also do the cork. So what I'm going to do, because this is not very entertaining watch. I'm gonna get this fully base coated and then we'll jump to the next part. So as you can see, I've got everything, all the gray base coated. Now it is patchy in some parts, but don't worry too much about that because you're gonna be putting contrast paint over the top. So what we now do is get some black Templar uh, contrast paint. And what we wanna do when we do this is we want to pull it to the deepest recesses. So if you stand up here, you want to pull it in to these creases of the cape. All right. And you just add a little bit of medium on your palette for that. And you want to pull it down like so. Again, don't worry too much about making a mess with other parts of the model because we're going to be tidying that up anyway. Like so. All right. Again, with, con the, the, with contrast paint, if you want to in make the color more intense, more darker, what you can do is add an extra layer so just get under right underneath for the front part here just be very careful and just do this again don't worry too much about making a mess of the white armor because we're going to be going back over that Now 
later on when we do the armor with Korok's white. So before I do finish off that, what I'm just going to do is show you how to do the base. When you're at this at this stage, get a little bit of black templar, thin it down with some medium, so it's thin. And then what you can do is just wash over all of the stone, the grey stone work that you've got. It's a good idea to do this now. Um, because obviously you're going to be doing white on the on the armor around the feet so if you make a mistake it's easier to tidy up and at this stage than it is to do the whole of the base so just give that a wash and that'll sit nicely in the recesses ready for when we do the base later on the top part we're going to show you how to do all the mud. Now, if you wanted and you want to add a little couple of extra colors in there, you could add, you know, a little bit of um, wormwood or one of the other browns and make like a dark brownie color, dark brownie black color. And that would work really well as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do so I'm going to get the rest of all of this done on the inside of the, the cloak and we will get let it get dried and then we'll start on the next part of the model. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now that's everything dry, as you can see, contrast paint kind of brings everything out which is really, really kind of cool. So what we're gonna, gonna do now is we're going to now move on to base coating the armor. And the reason why we're doing the armor now rather than start highlighting the black is if we make any mistakes on the black, we can then correct them and move on from there rather than, you know, having to re-highlight everything else. So, what we need now is just some Corax white on your palette. And this is where we get to think about how we want the army, the army, the armor to finish. Because you've got two choices now. You can do like the box art and have like that brownie finish to the, the actual male armor. Or what we can do is a more bluey white color um, front that is can be sort of a traditional white armor. And the reason why is this is a good time to sort of think about it is because it's gonna depend on which contrast paint you're going to choose to use. So if you're gonna go for the traditional white armor with a sort of gray shadow with a sort of bluey cold tint then apothecary white is the contrast paint that we're going to use or if you want the more sort of box art look from the army book um, then what you need is thinned down snake uh, skeleton horde and that will do that so just be very careful try to be as neat as possible because what you don't want to do is having to come back and tidy everything up so what you want is all of the armor panels coated with Corax white and then you are wanting both sword scar scabbards and there are two there's just one just inside there Just there. Um, I'll get that off camera because it's a little bit fiddly. And then as well as the inside of the scabbard as well.
if you want, you can keep the scabbards till last and then do them when you do after you've done the gold. And then also shoulder pads. Like so. Brushes I'm using for this is my size one Rosemarine Co. Series 33. Amazing brushes. Rosemarine Co. should definitely sponsor my videos. And speaking of following, if you haven't already, uh, please uh, hit subscribe. Uh, the channel is nice, is growing nicely. And I'm very pleased with how it's going, but we are definitely getting closer to that. The little milestones that YouTube set. Um, so it would be really cool to start hitting a couple of them and getting them done. Uh, also, if you if you have subscribed, uh, ring the bell because it helps you get notified when I've uploaded new videos. Um, also, um, I do have a Patreon page, and if you, I mean, if, I've only got a few, and the Patreons are amazing because the money that I've actually got off the Patreon over the past since I've started the YouTube channel. Um, has allowed me to upgrade my light. Uh, I have a, a, a webcam on its way for to getting into some live streaming. So this is all being funded by the Patreon page, which is, you know, absolutely amazing. I, I couldn't I couldn't thank my Patreon backers uh, any more than you know because they are super cool. And you know, there's going to be a few changes to the Patreon page with how it works in regards to. Um, the sort of layout and stuff but it's definitely there if you need if you want to support me in other ways i am very much appreciative of it so this part here just be very careful because you've got a little lip just at the top pardon me i burped so you get the general idea you just want to get white over everything so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off and then get all of to the harder reach areas and then we'll be right back for the next stage. Okay, so that's everything base coated. So now what we need to do is you need to get skeleton hoard contrast paint and then you need to mix it down to about one part skeleton hoard to at least three parts contrast medium it needs to be thin enough so it's not going to settle on the surface too much and it's going to pull into the recesses so i'll show you on the glove how how much the mix so your mix needs to roughly be like this all right like that pure contrast paint would look like that so you can see the difference so you get the mixture load up your brush and then very very carefully start pulling it in and then just do armor section by armor section so just do this part and wherever it's pooling like up here just take your brush and take it off and then just nice thin coat same with the front And again, so you just work your way around the whole model very carefully, bit by bit. Put in skeleton hoard in, and then what you'll find is it'll really start 
making the armor look nice and cool. There's not much white armor to it. So it's, it's pooling there just a little bit in here. As you can see, so what I want to do, just get rid of that. So it's not too much. You really just want to stain the armor and get that sort of browny gold color. So again, this pool in here is far too much. Just put, take it off. And then this, this bit here is seriously too much. All right, just keep working your way around the whole model, getting all of the parts. So the, the scabbard, just like that. You get a really nice effect. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'll finish this off and get it dry and then we'll show you the results. I'll be right back. So there you go, it's nice and dry. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to move straight onto highlighting the white. And then what we want is some off one gray. And then when you do, you just wanna bring that along the raised edges of the armor. So I'm using a, a size zero, because it's got a really good point. What you wanna do is just bring it across. You wanna lightly do over the top of the armor like that. So for the scales, you want to just along the underside of them. Like so. And then just using the tip of the brush, just pull the brush over the top. If you're really good at dry brushing and you're happy that you're not going to get it anywhere else, you could dry brush this part now. like so okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get all this finished and I'll be right back okay so that's all the highlighting done I've also done the helmet and the hands so what we now do is we get some white pure white you need to use white scar or you can use white acrylic ink and what we need to do then is we just need to pick out the most prominent points on the armor. Again, still using the same brush. Just on the bleh, can't speak on the prominent points. So on the tops, like so. Like that, and. Uh, like so okay so now that's all done what now we're going to do is highlight the black so with some um, Thunderhawk blue just pick out the prominent edges like 
like so. Okay. Um, on the main part, like on here, just put it on and then just feather it out. And you want underneath here as well. See, follow the curve. Where the edge here, just feather it. You basically want to work your way all the way around using thinned Thunderhawk blue just to get those highlights on. So I'm gonna continue this and we'll be right back. Okay, so now that you've got this, it looks a bit rough, but what we do now is we get a glaze of Black Templar, and then we glaze over the whole area. What that'll do, it'll just tie in just tie it all in so it'll it'll sort of tone down the Thunderhawk blue and you'll get a nice shaded result. You do that all the way around, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of contrast into the black. Very careful not to hit any of the white colors. With your glaze. Okay, so what we wanna do now is we wanna get some wormwood Make a wormwood glaze and then very carefully we want to run the wormwood glaze into the deepest recesses. And what that will do, it will add contrast with the blue. Like so. Just add it into all of the creases. All right. So what now we're going to do is we're going to do a fine edge highlight of. Fenris grey, so make sure this is quite thin. What we're going to do is just pick out the most prominent points. so and then along here on the edge on the corner just pick it out like so for these parts here what you can do is very very carefully just put a very thin 
I like. Along the top. Okay, like that. That'll just make it stand out a little bit. And then it just here, because you've got a, a crease and then a fold, just run a nice highlight just on the bottom. And then just all on like that. And again, just edge highlight the edges. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish all of that off and then what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the gold. Okay, time for the gold. So what we're going to get is some liberated gold and then we're going to start picking out all of the areas that are gold. So it's mainly little parts in here. So you need to be ultra, ultra careful. not to go outside the line and then this big part here and then what we've got is the two knee pads so be very careful this knee pad here this one's got a star on it if you make a mistake with the inside we can always go back and correct that but the main part is to try to keep inside so that's the gold parts done okay uh, you also do that on the swords and on the helmet part. So what we now do is we now get some Gilliman Flesh contrast pin and thin it down with a bit of medium. And what we want to do is just carefully wash over. So we're gonna get this to dry. And then we'll show you the highlights. So that's all the gold base coating. As you can see, I've also glued the head on now as well as the swords. So what we need to do is just carefully shade them. And then we can get on to doing some highlights on the metal. So to the highlight the metal, what we're gonna use is uh, Storm Horse Silver. And I'm going to switch down to the size zero brush. And we're just going to edge highlight everything that's gold. So Just picking out all the details. Like so. 
and for these parts here just be very careful and just pick out the detail Same as there. So what you need to do is you need to go around the whole model, just picking out all of the detail. And then we can go into some finishing touches. So basically, finishing touches basically we've got these parts here to do, the ribbons to do, and the ribbon will be done the same as these tassels, and then the swords and the base. So not much left for him to do. Just edge highlight. Just like that. So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna jump forward, get everything base coated and tidied up, and then we'll be right back. So now that everything's tidied up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some Athenian blue. We're just gonna put it on our palette a little bit. We're just gonna thin down with a little bit of medium. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sort of allows a little bit of a ghostly glow so these little parts here on the on the swords a bit there and this part here just put the athenian blue and then the same part here as well on this sword and then on the shoulder part here we want to pull this color into the the recesses like so and then just pull the excess in and around there like that and then what you can do is you get some more and then just do the same For the plumes here, what I do is I just lightly put it in and then with a damp brush I just pull it out. Like so. And on here, just do it again. So bring it in a bit more than that. A bit more. Follow the contours of the, the model. Like so. And then with that brush, just pull it out. And you do that on all of them to the rear as well. And then that's that done. What you can do just to intensify this a little bit more. Let's give it another coat, but concentrate this. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish that off, do the backs and everything, and then we'll be right back 
and then we'll get this base coated ready for highlighting. Okay, so for the, the scroll, what I've got is a one, one, well, two to one uh, mix of Pterodon turquoise and black templar with thinned with a little bit of contrast medium. So what we want to do is just get that on. Listen carefully, you don't want to get it everywhere. Like so. And then you're going to allow that to dry. And then we're going to highlight it. Okay, allow that to dry and we'll get right back and then we'll get that highlighted. Okay, so what we've done is we've also, all the little tassels as well have been done the same. So what we need to do now is highlight it. So using some arm and blue, we just edge highlight. along the edges just using the edge of the brush and then when it comes down to this you've got the little grooves the contrast paint brings it out just bring it across every now and again where you see the little highest ridge do that the, across the whole thing And then that's that. So I'm gonna finish this off. And be right back. Okay, now once that's done, now you need to go ahead and do the swords. So what you need is some iron breaker, thin down slightly, and just base coat all of the blade. We're gonna do a sort of nice shadowy effect on them okay so you need to probably about two two layers of this make sure you get underneath the blades as well and Make sure the blades are dry before you put the shade on. What you're gonna do is get them to dry and then get some water thinned down black templar and shade them. So we'll get that done now and we'll be right back. Okay, oops, I actually forgot to hit record just as I was doing this. So get the wash on the first blade, not too thick and if any, any excess, just take it off. But what you want it to do is ideally you want it to sit in this little pattern here. Okay, and the same as this blade. Okay. So do both sides, top and bottom. And then we'll get that dry and then we'll start adding the little sort of bluey effect to it. Okay, so that's now dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some Stonehorse Silver. We're gonna kind of make a thin wash, almost glaze consistency. It needs to be quite thin. So we're gonna look at it, the blade here. We're gonna get about halfway down and we're gonna just drag that blade 
like so. Okay, and then this side, right over the top, like so. So on this blade, and then on this side, okay, like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our Black Templar wash that we had earlier, make a glaze, and then we're just going to, that part that we didn't highlight, we're just going to go over the edge like that, and then down here, just darken the blade slightly, same way here, and here. If you get this little mark here where you've got the clear line, just bring it over. You're not really going to see much of it because we're going to add a couple of extra colours in. So once you're happy, you can then go back and then add another layer, this time closer to the top and same as this one. Okay, same as here, and same here. Get a few seconds to dry, get your glaze again, and this time bring it closer to the edge, and right up the top here, and then here really bring it in and then at the very tip so allow that to dry you can do the underside as well and then what we do is we get some of our amethyst blue we make a glaze out of it just need to put some more on my palette we make a glaze out of it and then what we do is we glaze over the whole blade okay like so allow that to dry And then we'll do it again. Over the whole blade. Like so. Thin glaze over the top. And then, once that's dry, we get our stone horse silver and we run it down the edges of the blade. Like so. And then this one. And then this one. To do the, the line down the center of the blade, get some paint on your brush and then get the tip. Very carefully, just run the tip of the brush lightly down the center of the blade and over. Icon. Okay, and then the same thing for this, lightly, just bring that brush over the top of the blade, 
picking out all of the detail. And that's the swords done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to finish off the, the, the model with the um, with the, the stone. And it's just going to be a simple dry brush. So we'll be right back. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've got my Rosemary Co. medium um, smoother brush. And we've got some Dawn Stone. So all we need to do is get some paint, get rid of the excess, and then slowly just build up those highlights. All right. And if you get some more, just get the excess off on a piece of tissue. And pick them out. Okay, so now what we do, keeping the, the same brush, we get some Karnak stone, and we get some paint on our medium smoother brush. These things are amazing, highly worth investing in, brilliant brushes. And again, just get the Karnak stone over the top. If you need to in here, just get down and just move it around in a circle. Just be careful not to hit the foot. And then to finish off, we get some of our Black Templar wash that we've had earlier. And then we just lightly put it back on over the top. And what this does is it, it's more of a, acting like a filter rather than a wash. So you're kind of just bringing all of the the stone colors together of the dry brushing gets rid of the the chalkiness and it kind of it brings all of the colors together and it makes it just look a lot better and then that is the middle min, the, the miniature finished so all you need to do then is base finish the miniature up to to match your army and to match your army and then that's you done. So what I'll do is I'll just do this and then I'll show you a finished article. And then that's, that's you.
And so here's a finished one. So as you can see on this one, I've been based all of the sand, added it all, and then that's all that really needs to be done on them side by side. As you can see the difference, you've got the sort of the sort of stone armor as well as the white armor. So that's the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, it's been an absolute blast to do. There is a tutorial coming for these crystal blades that I've done here. And there is also a tutorial currently up on the, currently, well, always will be, up on the, uh, the channel now for how I did the stone bases here. And I hope you really enjoyed it. Please throw me a subscription because um, we're very, very close to hitting the milestones that YouTube has set and we're getting really into them now. And if you want to support the channel in other ways, you can support me over on Patreon, 88 Point Star Painting, and be an absolute awesome legend. Thanks very much. Goodbye.